Winter weeds. Yep, that's what we're gonna talk about today. I'm shooting a video on winter weeds. I got up early this morning, probably about 5 a.m. my normal schedule, and I spent the past few hours writing a full web page that completely details how you're gonna deal with these winter weeds that we have out now, more that might come, but it's a extremely detailed page with product links, talking about the weather, talking about different weeds, what we're gonna do, should we put down pre-emergent? We had all this warm weather move in, so hold on, I'm gonna go over it with you and uh, we'll cover all that, so hold on one sec. Hey guys, I don't think I've ever brought you back here. This is um, kind of the nasty woods area that's behind my fence that extends out on my property. And I'm actually back here today getting uh, my compost pile kind of ready. So uh, if you didn't watch the humichar video, watch the humichar video. We're gonna be doing a whole bunch of stuff. We're gonna be learning about biochar this year. Um, over the next couple of weeks, I'll be doing a video that teaches you in simple terms, very easy to learn, what is biochar, how it works, the difference between putting it on a lawn and using it in a garden. So we'll talk about that. Also, the Bermuda Lawn Guide uh, is complete. It's out in the description below. There's a link. Go to that page and all this information, link to the Bermuda Guide, <laughs> link to everything, all the weed killing products, all the instructions will be in that link in the description below. But anyways, what I'm doing today is, um, uh, before I get going on this and start talking, I'm gonna take you up to the garage and show you my weed killer mix that I like to do. But I've got a whole bunch of just dead grass clippings back here. Whenever I pull up the garden, I throw it back here. But this is the time of year I kinda wanna get my compost going. And I'll be doing a video on this probably maybe next week. But what I'm gonna add into this compost pile, and that includes, uh, we're gonna add in some good microbes, we're gonna add in some uh, manure, we're gonna add in some already existing dirt from the garden, so we pick up the natural fungi and microbes. We're gonna be adding uh, humichar to it. And we're going to be spraying it with a little bit of super juice because the super juice has nutrients, it has fulvic and humic acids. So we'll be doing all that to this mix, getting it ready. And basically what I'll do with this compost is I'll mix it into my garden soil at like um, uh, at, at a certain ratio. So maybe 10% or 20% compost to my garden soil. We're going to expand the vegetable garden this year. So that's coming up. So let me put this... Let me stop what I'm doing back here. I'm going to take you up to the garage. Or actually, I'm going to walk you around and I'm going to show you some winter weeds that are popping up. And then I'll go to the garage and show you how I mix up my winter weed killers. Okay. So, <laughs> no, I'm not going deer hunting today. Uh, it's cold out here. This is the first day. It's been cold for a while. The high today, it's, I mean, it's 11 o'clock and it's only in the 39 to 42 degree range. Finally, we have freezing temps coming in. We're going to be... Uh, the lows are going to be 24 to 28 for like three or four days straight. The highs are going to be probably 40s. So this is what we talked about in the last video was not freaking out because our Bermuda's coming alive or we've got a whole bunch of weeds popping up. This cold weather will take a, a lot of that, take care of a lot of that. You want to see something crazy? I've got a, that's a canvas tarp that I use for spray painting and I'm just throwing it over, um, my palms because when we get down to that hard 20s they have a tendency to burn a little bit that may help them a little bit we'll see I don't know but look at this look how green this grass is over here this is January 17th Bermuda grass this is the shortcut backyard that's probably eh, it might be an inch long look how green that is that's crazy absolutely crazy but you can see I really don't have any weeds over here there's not a weed issue um, I actually did one medium treatment of pre-emergent this year and then I stopped and I didn't worry about it because I wanted I wanted some poana to come up now this yard when we first got this house it was solid poana by the time spring came around it was a nightmare so over the years, we've gotten it under control, but I'm gonna show you a couple areas back over here. 
I really didn't do a great job with my pre-emergent because I'm just not worried about it. Um, let me grab this. So you can see over here, I got spots of poana popping up all over. And like if you look back over towards the fence near that garden over there, there's a whole bunch of poana over there. Back on the grassy knoll, back over here, you can see spots of poana popping up. Um, I'm just not that worried about it, to be honest, because <clears throat> uh, of this treatment that I'm about to do. So I did a, a fall pre-emergent granular treatment um, using the granular barricade that's on the website. And then uh, usually I'll come out, if I have any weed issues, I'll come out and add some weed killer. I'm going to mix up weed, two different weed killers if I need them plus a little bit of pre-emergent, and I'll show you how I do that. But let me grab the camera. Now, Barb has a few broadleaf weeds. My front yard has no weeds. I did a heavy, heavy treatment of pre-emergent on the world's worst lawn. There's not a single weed over there. And then on the new test patch we have across the street, I did do pre-emergent, but pre-emergent doesn't stop um, onion grass. That's one thing it doesn't stop. So I'm going to show you so my patch of onion grass. So let's walk over there real quick. And let me, while I'm here, let me just show you what poana. People sometimes call this fescue or this is what poana looks like. And it'll have this little like seed head on it. So that's what it looks like. So here it is in small stage, medium, larger. Now let me show you what happens. Oh, this is what poana looks like when it gets real big. See, there's no pre-emergent here. You get all these little seed heads. Okay, so my front lawn got a lot of pre-emergent and you can see there's no weeds. Anything green is basically Bermuda. <laughs> so that looks good. Barbs, I did an okay treatment. I did a moderate treatment, but you can see now we're getting broadleaf weeds. Broadleaf, broadleaf. What else? So you can see Looks like some spurs, some hen bit, some... There's a couple little weeds popping up over here. I'm not worried about it. But this is pretty cool here. See all this onion grass? Now this is that test strip. And this is that onion grass right here. And uh, the image we're putting into our mix will kill that. But you can see over here, let me show you the strip difference. All right, so can you see nice clean brown, nice clean brown, and tell me where the pre-emergent stops. See it? <laughs> That's pretty easy to tell. So here's where the pre-emergent stops. We've been working this area over here. This area has not been worked. And you can see all the crap over there. So let me take you into the garage and show you a mix that I'm gonna do. All right, so I'm in the garage and like I said, in the description below, that'll take you over to the web page. And guys, I put a lot of time into that web page. If you really just take the time to read it, don't don't post a question in the comments below until you've gone to that page and read through it because it's probably answered there. Because one of the things I deal with is I told last week in my video, I told everyone just to chill out for a minute, let the cold weather come back in. Um, we got freezing temps. That's what late January, early February brings usually in either some snow or some cold freezing temperatures in the 20s, sometimes touching teens. So what we need to kill as far as weeds and, the, and being worried about our Bermuda being non-dormant, coming back green, that'll all be reset. So I'm waiting for this reset period. So I'm not going to do anything yet. <clears throat> I'm going to wait for this cold weather to come in. And then probably the week after that, when I start to get some more warm temps, and when I say warm temps for me in Georgia here, when I go back up into those days where I'm like in the 60s sun, it's going to be 60 degrees for a high, the low is going to be maybe in the 40s or something like that. Now that's that warm temperature that I'm waiting for. And Why do I do that? Well, if I'm trying to kill weeds, the weed killers will not really be effective if it's freezing because the plants do this when the cold temperature comes in and then when the sixth fifth high 50s and low 60s come back in they the weeds will actually relax and actually start to process 
And that's what we want. We want to hit those weeds when they're actually processing what we're putting on it. So don't apply this stuff before a freeze, during a freeze. Wait for a warm temp to come through. Second rule, also combine that with rain. So you want to have the majority of broadleaf killers are going to be absorbed by the foliage. So you don't want it to wash off. So you want it on there for at least two or three days. So you really got to time this. I even put a link to the 10 day forecast. Look at your 10 day forecast and wait for that time. You got three or four days in the 60s with no rain, sunshine. That's the time that you want to do this treatment. So you're going to take a weed inventory um, and figure out what products you need. And I put links to all these products on the web page. What I'm going to do, there's two ways to do this. You can use a tank sprayer. I linked to a decent tank sprayer from Amazon. If you just want to go, if you just have a few weeds and just touch them, then use a tank sprayer, depending on what weeds you have. For me, because I'm going to mix up a big batch um, and I'm going to treat all one, two, three, four, that means almost five lawns that I have to treat. So I'm going to be making up probably five to eight gallons of this stuff, at least, that I'm going to be spraying out here to cover all that. Uh, these are the new spray bottles, by the way. Uh, last year, there was such an inconsistency with spray heads, and sometimes they would clog. I asked Andersons to solve this problem for us. <laughs> and so Andersons went out and sourced a 20 to 1 ratio spray head, which I tested, which does not clog. So it's a 20 to 1 ratio spray head in the bottles. Now the only issue is, is apparently the manufacturer they source this from, they're supposed to be stripes, but only like 20% of the bottles are stripes. So I'm warning you, some of your bottles will not have that viewing stripe on it for a while. So just assume that you're going to get a solid bottle, which you can still see. You can still see where the fluid is, just a little bit of a pain in the butt, but no big deal. Now the 20 to 1 ratio, it's different than other spray bottles. You used to be able to get 2,500 to 3,000 square feet coverage out of like um, out of the higher ratios or lower ratios, lower concentrations. You're only going to get about probably 2,000 square feet. So when you're mixing, if, and I put a thing on there about how to calculate how to calculate this on the web page in the link below, I talk about calculating that this is going to cover 2,000 square feet. I even put a link to. Um, how to measure your lawn square footage. There's a map on there that shows you how to measure your lawn square footage and divide that by 2,000. This is a quart, so if I've got, if I need four of these bottles, I need a gallon, I need to mix it up. Now all I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna figure out, let me make this real simple for you. I'm gonna say my lawn is 10,000 square feet. If my lawn is 10,000 square feet, uh, now let's, let's make it even simpler. Let's say my lawn is 8,000 square feet. If my lawn is 8,000 square feet, this bottle will cover 2,000 square feet, so I need to fill up four bottles. So for four bottles, if, since one bottle is a quart, four quarts in a gallon, I need to make up a total of one gallon of mix, the finished product. You got that? So it's pretty simple. So if you need six bottles, that's six quarts, that's one and a half gallons. And all I do is I put about that much warm water in my bucket. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take, um, I'll fill this up. Let's say I'm going to make, let me just say I'm going to make um, a gallon or a gallon and a half. So I'm going to put a gallon and a half of warm tap water, warm tap water. I've got super juice. Now that's a bag of super juice. I think that's almost two years old. Uh, and it, sometimes super juice will, will kind of clog, clog up. See how, see how sometimes this bag's been open all winter. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> kind of turns clumpy and dark. It's fine. It's no problem. It's hard. You just chop it off, put it in there um, in the warm water and just mix it up. So I'm going to put, let's say, a gallon and a half or two gallons of war warm tap water in here. I'm going to add, I'm really not trying to feed my lawn. The only reason I put super juice in it is because of the humix and because of the fulvix. And what it does is, I feel that it holds on the plant almost like a little bit of a surfactant. 
holds on the plant, it holds in the soil longer. So instead of just being chemicals or water, it's chemicals that are mixing in with the humix, the carbons, and the fulvic acids, and it sort of holds in that soil layer a little bit better, especially with the pre-emergent. Whenever I put out pre-emergent, I always mix it with super juice. I just find that there's just this, I don't want to say molecular bonding, but there's, you know, it's like the CEC ratios, the the exchange where it just sort of helps bond into that soil a little bit better. So that's the only reason I'm adding the super juice. I'm not adding it for nutrients. So I may put like one or two cups of super juice per gallon in there, just for that reason. All right, poana. For my poana and for any grassy weeds and for the onion grass, I'm gonna add image. There's a link to the concentrate. It's not that expensive. This big bottle is like 26 bucks or something. So I'm gonna add in here. Again, <clears throat> you just need to do the calculations on square footage. So if I have, if I have um, 10,000 square feet, let's say, if I have 10,000 square feet and it says use one ounce per, then I need 10 ounces of this stuff, liquid, fluid ounces, by the way. So I'm gonna put image in there because I know I have grassy weeds around. Uh, the 2,4-D amine, this is a really good, inexpensive, all-around broadleaf killer. This little, this little thing does like 16,000 square feet or something. I forget what it is. Um, so I put a link to this up. So I'll be putting this in the mix too. Now this is mainly for those broadleaf weeds. <clears throat> Pre-emergent. Um, because I did a pre-emergent so long ago, when was it, back in late uh, October or something, I put down some pre-emergent. Um, I'm gonna put dimension, liquid dimension in. This is not part of my spring pre-emergent program. What this is, is this is kind of a, a, a secondary winter pre-emergent. Everything is sort of dormant. But I will tell you there are a lot of people, because of this warmer weather, uh, this is not a bad idea because I guarantee you, you may have had some crabgrass actually start to germinate. People battle, if you battle goose grass or Dallas grass, um, this warmer temperature, it could possibly germinate. And if you wait to your spring pre-emergent, you may be a little late. So it's not a bad idea. Um, if you haven't put down pre-emergent in a while, to go ahead, I, I actually ordered another bottle of this to put in some dimension. It also, it's pre-emergent, but it also has post-emergent on young grasses like crabgrass. And I don't know if it, I don't know if it's post on Dallas and Goose or not. Definitely post-emergent killing on, on young crabgrass. So that's why I'm gonna be adding the dimension. Just because it'll stop. If I have poana showing up all around, this is gonna definitely stop the poana from from coming up, many more poem. Green dye, I put a link to the green dye on the website. Um, if you're gonna be using a tank sprayer, definitely use your green dye and put um, one or two tablespoons in your tank sprayer. The main thing being you get confused <laughs> what, what, what weeds have been sprayed when you're walking around spraying all these weeds. Uh, oh, by the way, if you're gonna use a tank sprayer, don't use the pre-emergent. Only if you're using a hose end tree in the whole lawn. But definitely if you have a tank sprayer, use some kind of marking dye. This stuff, this stuff isn't all that cheap, but it goes a long way. People use too much of this. I use like a tablespoon per gallon in my big mix, or a tablespoon for five gallons on my tank sprayer. But you just, you're gonna get confused. You don't wanna double treat stuff. You wanna just treat it with the right amount. So put some green dye on there. Now the reason, the reason why I put a little bit of green dye in here, it's not for marking. I won't be able to visibly see really um, what I'm treating. I could if I put a lot in. All, all it does is, I just wanna make sure, you know, you can get grasses and sticks in your mix. You can get all kinds of stuff that could clog up the sprayer. So as I'm spraying, I see a little bit of a green mist. It's not heavy green. It's a little bit of a green mist as I'm going along. And I can't tell you how many times last year that green mist turned white and I was like, holy cow, I stopped. 
because I wasn't putting out chemicals at that point. Now, if I didn't have the green dye in there, I'd just be spraying water and not know it. And then halfway down my lawn, I look at the bottle and go, man, I should have been using more than that. That's why we use the green dye. It's just a visual, you just visually watch. And if you see that green dye, all of a sudden you look and you're out of, you're out of chemical or there's a blockage or something. So that's why we use the green dye. Uh, that's about it. If you have a lot of broadleaf weeds, uh, you may want to add a little bit of surfactant. Let me see if I've got some. Oh, I had a bottle over there. I don't have, it's put up in the cabinet. You can add a little bit of surfactant if your main problem is broadleaf weeds. Remember, um, poana, onion grass, and a few other things. The majority of the killing of that product is done in the root system. So a lot of people are funny because they spray out the image for Poana and they're like, I sprayed it a week ago. Well, it hasn't rained, number one. Number two, it's going to take a good 10 days after a rain for it to start to yellow up. And it doesn't turn yellow, yellow. It just starts to turn pale. And eventually over a period of two or three weeks, it starts to yellow out. So if you have Poana and you use the right amount of image, it is a slow process. I'm just warning you. Don't expect to see 24 hour results. It's not what's gonna happen. Uh, the poana will die slowly. What is cool about it is um, when you spray it with the dimension and you spray it with the image, it stops the roots from growing and it weakens it. You can walk around and you just, you can just pick poana right, <laughs> right off your ground. It's like the roots just stop, so it's pretty cool. So on that page, like I said, I talk about using the weather to your advantage picking the right thing. I put a link to a weed identifier. I put a link to a square footage calculator. I put a link to the 10 day forecast. I put a link to all these products. I put a link to this. Um, there's all kinds of stuff we got going on. Oh, let me show you something over here. That's kind of cool. What is that dot? That is a laboratory incubator. We are doing some human char testing, biochar and human char testing. It's pretty cool. We're doing some videos on that coming up. So one of the other one of the other issues we're dealing with here is rain, and I wanted to show you this. I put this wheelbarrow out here six days ago, empty. Look at it. I mean that's nine. No, that's probably ten inches of rain in a week that we've got. Huge amount of rain. Uh, And that's what Poana looks like right there. For us, this is one of the biggest problems. So, real important. Make sure you're a YouTube subscriber because we're doing a huge series this year on educational as far as conditioning our soils. And what we're trying to do to the point with this, where you have the new product out, Anderson has helped us develop a human char, which is the biochar product. We're going to learn how to use that on lawns and in gardens. The ultimate goal through all this biochar that's hitting the industry over the past 30 years is to use less and less fertilizers because our soil is basically holding nutrients better, microbial activity, and we're using less and less fertilizer. And that's one thing over the next two to three years we're going to prove to you that we can really reduce the amount of fertilizer we're using by just putting something down like a humichar and organic matter. I'm gonna do a video and I'm gonna show you where you can walk down to a, like a, a supply center or sometimes even a Walmart and I'm gonna show you some cheap, cheap organic matter that's like $13 for a 50 pound bag <laughs> and you can put it in a spreader and put it on your lawn and you'll be amazed at the results of what it does organically to your lawn, adding that organic matter to feed that microbial activity. It, it's, it's gonna be a really cool season. So click that subscribe button. Also, don't forget every month this year, I think we're gonna do a giveaway, two or $300 of free lawn care products to anyone that's on the email list. Uh, so you have to be a YouTube subscriber. And then in the description below, that takes you to a web page. You'll see, sign up for the email alerts you sign up for the email alerts and that's it one time and you're every time we do a giveaway you're registered for it that just sends out notifications there's no marketing emails that come from that by the way i hate marketing emails we don't send out marketing emails it's just a notification center it says hey there's a new post up or a new video or whatever 
So, uh, I'm kind of chilly. Linda's out here. <laughs> She's shivering out here in the back. But uh, this is the first real good cold snap we've got coming in. So I'm actually kind of excited for some cold weather because it's been, I mean, last week it hit like 73 degrees out here. It was horrible. Uh, keep in touch and a bunch of new videos coming out. We'll be flooding them as much as we can and try and keep them interesting and learning as much as possible. Talk to you later. Duck.